Hi everyone and welcome back to the Technology Centre here in Birmingham. So today we're going to be taking a look at how do we set up for multi-axis moves on our Haas VF2 with this trunnion. Well there are two ways that we can do that. One of them is to use TCPC or Tool Centre Point Control or DWO, Dynamic Work Offsets. This lets you put your data anywhere you like, on your machine, on your path, and then you just represent that back in Fusion, and away we go. However, if you don't have these controller options, we have to think a little bit more carefully about where we set this data. It has to be done at the center of rotation. Now, before we start diving into how do we do that, let's take a few seconds to have a look at why we need to consider these two different options and how they work. Using DWO lets me put my datum in the most convenient location. We can see here it's at the centre of this sphere, and as the rotary axes move, the datum tracks relative to the component. However, if you don't have DWO, you need to set your datum in the centre of rotation. This time, we can see the datum stays static as the component moves round. How do we find this point? Well, it's the intersection of the two rotary axes. The Z rotary axis is found by probing the center bore of the platter, as this is the axis that the platter rotates around in Z, or the C axis. You can also use a dial test indicator to find the center of your platter. We now know the X and Y values for our WCS, but how do we find the Z? Well, we need to know the distance from the platter to the center of rotation. Hopefully, you have a manual available that can take you from a reference point to the center line and then the same reference point to the platter height. We can now simply work out the difference between the platter height and the center line. If you don't know these figures, you can quite easily just probe the platter when it's at 90 degrees, record down the value, Move the platter 180 degrees so it's at 90 in the opposite direction. Again, probe and record this value. And we can now work out the difference between these divided by two is the difference from our center line to our platter. In our case, that's 3.1365. Now we can use our probe to probe the platter, add on the additional offset we know from the platter to the spindle center line and we have all three axes for our offset x y and z let's now take a look into fusion and see how we define this in our setup we can see here that using the power of integrated cad cam i have a good representation of what's on my machine both with stock and part i also have a sketch that i've offset from the platter 3.136 and contains that center of rotation point. I can now go into my setup and rather than using a model box point, I can use a selected point and select that center of rotation from my sketch and now all my toolpaths can come from there. So I now can do multi-axis moves without DWO using Fusion 360. Now we have set up our center of rotation as the datum on our machine and correctly reference that from Fusion, all of our toolpaths, be it 3 axis or 3 plus 2 and 5 axis, are all going to come from this single datum and machine our component. So hopefully now, you know what is DWO, how does it work, and if you haven't got DWO on your controller, how you can still make multi-position, five-axis components like what we've made today. And this component also doubles up as a check, because what we can do is we can measure the thickness of these ribs and make sure they're all even. And this is going to ensure that our center of rotation has been set correctly on our machine and we can have confidence in the parts that we're producing. So thanks very much for watching and see you all again next time.